This is uh, my podcast about Creative Commons, the iPad, and open education resource. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, and the first thing uh, would be we're trying to like learn about hard fan. Uh, the issue being that unlike uh, traditional learning, the iPad allows us to learn in a way that is not only uh, educational but also entertaining. And uh, this presentation is shared by Creative Commons uh, BY. All you have to do with this uh, presentation will be to attribute. So. Uh, shaping tech for the classroom, a utopia. Mark Kransky uh, developed a four step process of how he saw the classroom and traditionally integrate technology into the. And uh, he decided that this is primarily by dabbling and doing all things in all ways doing all things in new ways, and what we're interested on primarily is doing new things in new ways. Now, uh, uh, something that's very interesting too is how to do all things in new ways. And I believe that through an iPad allows you to do both, doing all things in new ways and doing new things in new ways. This is a picture by Bobo, Bobo Harp. Uh, Bobo Harp recently became a free app for a day. Uh, like many other apps, uh, if you set them at the right time, you'll be able to uh, obtain usually a $1 app for free. I mean, most of them periodically are offered uh, free of charge. Um, and I was able to obtain this one uh, for free. Again, um, it's, a, it's a harp, so uh, the sound actually follows the lines that you draw with your fingers. So you go ahead and draw a pattern, and uh, then the sound will uh, interpret your pattern and make a musical rhythm. And, uh, uh, harp notes. So today's agenda, we're going to go to download, download, OER, remix, reuse, distribute and revise, and then create, how to create a audio, video, and picture content. And then we'll talk about activities 1, 2, and 3, and uh, you have to choose one activity. And download, download, download. Guys, every day new apps, um, iPad apps and iPhone apps come out and are available. Most of the time apps enter the market free of charge or sometimes actually overly priced and they come down in price pretty quickly after that. Uh, but again, always keep your eyes out for uh, new apps. And there's many programs that allow you to do this. There's Pandora, uh, there is uh, App Shopper, there is uh, there's a few series of them. And now uh, all their apps usually have specials. Like I mentioned before, Google Harp, Google Harp, uh, was free for me. Uh, it's usually not free. Uh, there is various. There's a free app a day initiative, and there's other initiatives that the whole objective is to uh, free an app, uh, make it free of charge for a day uh, or longer. And uh, well, this is. Uh, I mean, it's important to always take into consideration. Is to uh, if you are brilliant and keep your eyes out, maybe you'll find an an app that uh, you thought uh, was a one dollar to our app and it's actually free for a weekend. Uh, I bought ten dollar apps for a dollar before. Uh, there are various programs that will let you know when these uh, apps become available so uh, download them and the other thing that is very important is that once you download an app you own that app. Even if it goes up in price you don't have to pay the extra money for an update. And you can delete it but you still have the rights to that app. So. Uh, the fact is, is once you download it and you then delete it from your iPad, because it came free, even if you don't plan on using it, that app still, uh, you're allowed to use that app in the future. Okay, here you can see uh, the App Shopper, Apple Store, App Store, uh, Appetizer, App Tracker, App Popular. Those are all App Browser, uh, App Free, and App Miner. Those are all uh, fine free apps or uh, discounted apps. And there are more. There's also one called Pandora. Uh, there are a few more. This is a look of App Shopper. And uh, today, for example, I downloaded Procreate, um, considering that not in Northern Chair, although I have enough, I think, of those. Um, the French Peak Board looks interesting. I was interested in learning French. And I also downloaded the uh, Word of Words. Uh, which is actually it's just always been free, but uh, I didn't know about it. Um, 
so this is the next generation online Cold War game and uh, it's a pretty interesting educational game and I'd like to speak a little bit about educational game education in many ways is going towards a gradual um, increasing of difficulty levels that is uh, that you can access through online games um, this is a very uh, interesting um, development and the iPad is one of the platforms that can best take advantage of this new development um, more and more educational games are coming out on a regular basis and as a shopper one needs to be aware of uh, these new developments also as an educator it's important to know uh, that we're trying to make education fun but hard fun so but that, what that means not just to uh, develop things that are entertaining but it also besides being entertaining and educational um, so preparing for learning the Bruturians class I went ahead and uh, so for a couple of weeks uh, which apps came up to free and uh, they'd be interested in downloading there's a citizenship test, a flick football, Google Fit, Art of Glow, Cartoon, Montage Pro, President, Teen Soldier, which is a great, great story, digital story, uh, Space House, which is a remix, uh, CC Licenses, in Into Infinity, which is another uh, Creative Commons program, so we'll talk a little bit more about detail, Timetable, an educational way, uh, an entertaining way to teach a uh, multiplication table, and uh, Frank Stein is a uh, public uh, domain book and also a very uh, in engaging app if you're into uh, that uh, traditional literature uh, Braille Writer now um, there's no excuse to not learn Braille with a, a free app that uh, can allow you to quickly uh, learn some of the codes and actually just uh, type something in English and then have it translated into Braille or vice versa um, I signed usually one or two dollar app again I got a free when I had the opportunity to do so, uh, there's some various of these apps such as Voxel, Self Assembly, uh, allow you to uh, meander, allow you to create uh, either a 3D environment or a molecule um, rendering or just an art form. Same with Y Sketch, W Sketch. Uh, it's important again, uh, look for these apps and uh, you may be surprised on. Uh, what new uh, engaging way of viewing a particular topic that you're interested on is developed through this platform. Uh, unlike a traditional Windows program uh, which eventually can clutter your operating system, it's important to remember that uh, iOS apps are self-enclosed, much more self-enclosed than a traditional Windows app and in that sense they don't damage your operating system in a similar manner and uh, you can have as many apps without really having the uh, side effects or uh, cost benefits of uh, then having a slower operating system. Again, this is another list of Bruturians app. The Meridian Paint, I'll show you uh, what it can do later. Uh, the Monsters Ate My Homework, I uh, thought that was a pretty fun game to play. Uh, the uh, Museum of Modern Art, New York Expressionist Painting. Uh, the Hubble side hologram is pretty cool. That uh, fossil making app, Grace. That's uh, yeah, might may be interested in that app. That was a forty dollar app that came free, and it's uh, related to autism. Project No, I love this app. This app allows you to uh, link to social networks that are trying to solve um, social problems and work together to solve these problems. And uh, it may just be also just other research projects. There's I think bird sighting so you are supposed to with your camera take picture whenever you see a bird and a crowdsource initiative then uh, you uh, all together contribute to the uh, most effective um, uh, brother brother's research that can be conducted um, and other apps that I recently downloaded for free Open education is more um, than just open courseware, and uh, the iPad is a good example of this. Uh, programs such as uh, how videos, even YouTube, EDU, or iTunes U, uh, are examples of uh, educational materials that's freely available. Now, they're not all shared on a Creative Commons share alike license, 
but um, they are fully accessible. Uh, while there is a difference for a creator into whether something is a freeware or it's a public um, domain or a Creative Commons share alike license for a user, actually, that's not so much of an issue. Uh, what that means is, for example, MIT Open Courseware, uh, their license is not Creative Commons BY, and by that, the permissions that you have for modifying the content. Uh, are more strict than um, under a CC BY license. OERs prefer to open um, Creative Commons CC BY, but um, there uh, it's not the only way around it. Um, there are other ways that uh, OERs are actually uh, accepted um, by the community. Uh, again, the, the important fact fact to learn and to understand is that if a license is restricted then you cannot go ahead and label the same material or a remix material with a more open license. You are limited to what license you use depending on what's the strict, most strict license that has been used before with that same material. Shout out to Later Innovation, uh, Ted and uh, Andrew Chris Anderson from uh, work, who works with TED Talks, uh, he uh, has recently uh, promoted the capabilities for crowd accelerated innovation. Unlike innovation that happens through um, traditional means, somebody maybe working in a lab, uh, what crowd accelerated innovation implies is that through op to video now we can share certain skills that before we weren't able to share. For example, today we can share and uh, see somebody who we incredible mad skills dancing, and uh, then we can try to imitate their skills by looking at their feet work. Now that was something before that we could try through literature that we couldn't really visualize. The ability now to visualize certain trends and visualize certain skills through the internet allows us to have a, quite a quicker and a crowd form of innovation. Um, the video I wanted to share with you. you won an award for a uh, uh, Creative Commons Festival. Uh, again, this is an example now of um, the material of a well-known open education resource. Now, what we need to remember is that before 2003 um, or 2001, uh, we didn't know Wikipedia did not exist. Now, in a very few, a number of years, Wikipedia now rivals some of the most uh, commonly known traditional encyclopedia, some of these had 200 years or more uh, developing content and editing. And this is again another example of crowd 
in the basin. Here it shows you now where it allows us uh, the iPad after mobile technology and also your iPhone is to access open course there uh, anywhere, anytime, and find the specific subject about which you wish to uh, uh, further learn. Uh, Berkshire University, then also Camp Academy. He had recently made a video at uh, TED Talk actually uh, promoting the flipped classroom. He uh, that's a very interesting story. Anybody knows who he is? Uh, well, basically, he, uh, I'll quickly explain it. Um, he was tutoring his cousins after he uh, went from being a hedge fund analyst and uh, he was at a job. And uh, actually, no, he was still working as a hedge fund analyst. And uh, he needed to make us, uh, well, he just wanted to help his family with uh, their homework. And uh, basically, his family was like, well, we like you more. How you uh, explain your subjects online, how you explain them in person. And uh, eventually he found his calling. He made 10 minute videos. Uh, if you could I guess about a great number of topics. And uh, he's seen as one of the most revolutionary innovators in education in the recent years. Uh, MIT Open Courseware started in 2001. Uh, they started Charles Bessler Press with an open app. And uh, after the professors floated at the university, they decided all together to, uh, by majority decision, to allow their content to be openly accessible by anybody in the world. Um, so over 2,000 courses, over 1,800 courses are accessible online. Your f I mean, if a uh, person is interested, then they can uh, go ahead and sign up for the course. And uh, you have a nice layout of uh, the courses available through this app. Just uh, go ahead and download the course you're interested in uh, learning more about. Um, another way in which uh, Creative Commons can be used is uh, all open licenses and open educational resources are by books that are now part of the public domain. A lot of these books can be read through Kobo and Wildpath and other um, iPad apps as well. Uh, again, Creative Commons, you have the Creative Commons. BY, uh, that you all you have to do is attribute. Uh, BY and essay, you also have to share alike. Uh, CC BY, uh, no derivatives, and D. CC BY, non commercial. CC BY, share alike, non commercial. CC BY, non commercial, no derivatives. So basically, that one can be shared, uh, but it cannot be edited. There's an interesting app uh, using Creative Commons and the Duff Lab to be able to share sounds with, uh, with people. And uh, it's very interesting, really, uh, what we can uh, share with this app. And uh, like basically, different sound rhythms come up, and then you, by the distance from the center, uh, the sound changes, and then you can create an interesting rhythm based on this Creative Commons sound. Uh, again, regarding the difference between the types of licenses for Creative Commons, this is a Creative Commons website. You usually have themes that allow you to practice uh, with the difference between the licenses, if, my, if the explanation I gave was not clear. Uh, and then you can share, you should share, and encourage other people to share. And remember, the more we all share, the more that uh, we can also innovate, create, and advance as a human society. Uh, again, you can be why that would be open knowledge. Uh, share alike, be why that's also open knowledge. Uh, open knowledge, uh, they that's their definition, they consider the other ones not to be open knowledge. But the other licenses also have. And this is for a free cultural uh, product. Again, the keys are buy and share alike. Uh, that allows you to have that remix capability, the reuse capability, the um, redistribute capability, and the reinvent capability too. Uh, so what we need to remember now is that uh, in recent years the digital world has come upon us. 
and with the advent of the digital world, new skills are required from the common individual, uh, especially in the most uh, the future job market where uh, you are expected to change jobs regularly. It is important to have such skills that uh, can help you all across the board and also to be caught up with the newer generation. In that sense, what you may be having here is maybe a kind of cultural capital or um, a way in which remaining mm, having an understanding of the type of equipment that other people have yet to have access to. So in that sense, you have an advantage there. And the fact is, how can we use this advantage to best uh, benefit ourselves? Um, it is important to uh, stories now to contain video and audio. Inkling, for example, Inkling textbooks are a great example of this. And in the future, I expect most of more of your textbooks to have embedded video and audio. Uh, maybe the YouTube slash back books. Um, there is need to be, by tomorrow's citizen, to be a capable media producer. And then the iPad has those streams of capabilities. And uh, the also the need for augmented reality capabilities and uh, with future apps and the benefits of app of two in that regard. So the camera is now not a flat surface where you interact with media, but now you can actually interact with your environment as well. Um, you could use a microphone a little bit, but not to the same extent. It's a very interesting story about a soul twin soldier who came out in Spain to see enemy with audio. You can actually move that moon uh, from there and over the roofs and stuff. And every scene, pretty much, you have that ability to move things. A Pinero, the Japanese remake of the Red Riding Hood, with an axe there, as you can see. And um, that also has that uh, ability to act, interact with the environment as you're listening and reading a story simultaneously. Um, World of Viruses also similar way. Now remember th if you can look at the bottom, this was done by the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. Um, so what will the University of Minnesota develop? Now I was playing with my wife one day, we didn't want to play the travel, so what we decided to do was to play with an uh, animation program that had come for free that week. And uh, what we decided to end up making was a num num. Num num sort of started eating pizza and rice. Uh, Good. Hope you liked it. Uh, we have fun made it. So again, this is an, uh, uh, this DJ station. There's many of this one from the iPad actually, and you can uh, create sound. There was a little jukebox great app on which I put a clip on it too. Uh, that also came free all of a sudden uh, because they were uh, promoting a new app they had developed, and that was something for a day or two. Artify, uh, so just to make a Monet type painting. We do though. You can actually uh, another part that's important about the app was the social uh, connections, and. Uh, We've been able to, I mean, through this program, for example, you can compete and doodle with your friends. Uh, I have enjoyed that a lot. That's what Artify allows you to do and uh, makes me look better in the winter. Uh, and again, a small little app can make you look like an alien. All right. Uh, you can sketch and make the sketch to look quite much better than you could do one in real life. Uh, at least speaking for myself. Um, Bumsy, for example, allows you to make postcards. Uh, I didn't like the postcard idea too much, this is all I made with it. Um, ugly uh, monkey type man. Uh, maybe, you know, see the uh, spray paint all over a sidewalk. Maybe cloak paint. Or maybe it's just remix of sound and music. Or maybe it's just uh, paint a strange canvas, right? Uh, anyhow, uh, you can also put them all together and make a story. And this is what we're getting at. How can you make these stories and add sound and video to them, right? 
that you can repolarize the picture. Um, so some apps, for example, that I really like are the extraction. Uh, I mean, CN apps. I mean, in this app, you can go into the picture. You can interact with the pictures and look at videos about the pictures and hear audio about the pictures. You can hear the story behind the pictures. You're browsing through the feed of 3D environment and scene and interacting with the materials in a different way, even maybe perhaps richer way that you could in real life. Now, this is some of the things the iPad and modern technologies allow you to do. Um, but again, we still at the University of Minnesota, we have a need for development. A venture learning app, for example, is a great app that was developed by a student. Now there have been a 15 or 14 year old kid recently made an app. And Ares, for example, as the University of Wisconsin Madison, they're trying to include within uh, these devices the capability for people to interact with their mom and in that way do fast work and develop stories and like record uh, journalistic uh, notes about their uh, neighborhoods and. Uh, their neighborhood activities. Now, uh, University of Minnesota, however, we need to promote this a little more, and I hope that maybe perhaps you guys can help with that. Uh, gamification means uh, developing more games that are related to education, and then the importance of having a social network and ways to connect, not just for social issues, but also to learn educational issues. It is the cover of the Adventure Learning app. A great app developed by students. Some of my apps here, uh, I mean, a lot of them. There's Adventure Learning, there's the R, there's the R periods, 3D Brain, Wolfram Algebra app. Uh, Wolfram apps are very interesting. Um, Chalk Hands, this is a mobile following. There's another one called Adam Pulse. You can actually get paid 10 cents for every poll you complete. But the thing is, I mean, this one actually breaks you down by county, I think, at least by state and the, the district about how people are voting in certain issues and this one of course goes into Republican and Democrat uh, but uh, I mean it's an interesting way uh, to uh, use the iPad uh, TED Talks, Mass TV, Lens of Rob, Ace of Courts again you have a wide array of ways to learn in manners that you weren't able to learn before it is important to remember that open education resources are not trying to replace traditional education. I mean, maybe for some that's the goal, but for others the goal is uh, to supplement education, to allow the students after they finish class to be able to continue to learn from home and maybe learn by a professor that addresses better their learning modalities. Um, film School is a good program. Linda, I mean, they have great tech tutorials. Uh, another Wolfram app. And here we can see US has two apps, for example. Um, the men still need better apps, but uh, we're, I mean, we'll hopefully get there before uh, long. Um, other educational apps that I enjoy, and even more educational apps that I enjoy. I mean, Work Flags, uh, those uh, college uh, men men mention apps, for example, those, um, those are flashcard apps, and they test you on uh, um, various uh, college subjects, and they will teach in the field. So, and see. Uh, more educational apps and more educational apps now games some of some here for example I bought that one a uh, motion map also I think that one was developed by Stanford it's an educational game stack space rocket city map again uh, where is the line really between gamification of education and simply entertainment and gaming and is there a line and how blue this is line and uh, these are some of the issues that uh, recent uh, scholars within learning technologies and also within education and in broader education are uh, trying to address and also um, this video game uh, now uh, Bo 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 Ball, for example that's a six to 14 year old kid or that 16 I don't know he, he was the one developed that game and it was a hit top 10 for, uh, for a while uh, other uh, interesting uh, education projects. Okay, so uh, you need to complete one of the three activities and work in a small group. Activity one, go to Flickr, find some fairly common pictures, make a poster around them, or solve it in class. 
but then I mean a topic that Lynn has covered another day. And again, look at the bottom part of the screen, there's a creative commons. Um, so all the pictures there as well. Provence, there's a big creative commons. Doodle something. Just an application to doodle. And they're going to share it to your class. And you can also remix or create a beat. Uh, sample in that beat app. I made this one uh, last night. Uh, quite enjoyable. Activity three, go to Open Course Work Camp Academy, watch a video of your interest, write your comments on how it could be better. See you then. And uh, thank you. I uh, really appreciate um, being able to come here today. And uh, if you have any questions, always look in the internet, try to teach yourself, come to us as well. Thank you. Bye bye.